the Rhode Island Foundation, partnering with passionate Rhode Islanders to lead, transform, and inspire our state. Learn more at RhodeIslandFoundation.org. Welcome to another segment of In Another Opinion, a public information program where our discussions are focused on the communities of color in the state of Rhode Island. I'm your host, Peter Wells. My guest today is Lieutenant Charles P. Wilson, National Chairman of the National Association of Black and Law Enforcement Officers. Welcome, Charlie. Thank you, Peter, for inviting me. Oh, it's, it's my pleasure. Uh, you know, you and I have talked and known each other for quite a while, so oh, it's yeah. fun to have you on the show. Oh, yeah. You know, how are you enjoying retirement? Let me ask you that first. I still think I'm supposed to get up and go to work in the morning. I understand. <laughs> I feel that. I hear you. I hear you. I, I'm the same way. Yeah. Listen, Charlie, for, for citizens in the, in, in, that are in our viewers who don't uh, know anything about NABLO, could you give us a little quick summary? NABLO is a uh, organization of approximately eight to 9,000 people across the country. Uh, we have member chapters in six different states in the Northeast area. Mm -hmm. uh, we have individual members in um, Illinois, Texas, Louisiana, Georgia, California, Ohio, Michigan, Maryland, Delaware. Okay. Um, I've been uh, chair now, this is my fifth term. Uh, our members are both active and retired officers, uh, regular municipal law enforcement, corrections, investigatives, uh, federal law enforcement. Uh, so we run the gamut. Mm -hmm. uh, our, our members are highly dedicated to uh, the concepts of community policing, and we're very involved in the various communities we, uh, uh, we work out of and live in. And I know that you've had workshops and things of that nature, um, especially focused on young people and, and, yes. and their interactions with law enforcement. One of our principal programs is what to do when stop by the police. Uh, it's a educational package that we offer both to community people mm -hmm. as well as our counterparts in law enforcement. Uh, it's basically a program where we explain what happens during those interactions between law enforcement in the community mm -hmm. and how best to interact with law enforcement. Uh, it's not an issue of uh, trying to show people how to beat getting out of a ticket mm -hmm. or uh, create a, a internal affairs issue for, for police officers. It's a matter of uh, learning how to deal with one another in those in incidents. Sure, sure. Uh, J Charlie, well, how, long, how old is the organization? The organization itself is, is approximately 20 years old. Okay. Uh, but we uh, officially formed in 2002. Uh, in fact, in Rhode Island, at the uh, Biltmore Mo uh, Hotel okay. in April of 2002. Uh, so we're celebrating this year our 16th anniversary as a, a formal national body. Very good. Congratulations. Thank you. Okay. Listen, uh, obviously the, na the name, the Association of uh, Black Law Enforcement Officers would suggest, does one have to be a black police officer to be a member? Our membership is both African-American officers as well as Latino officers. Uh, as quiet as it's kept, we do have several uh, uh, white associate members. Okay. Um, but principally, we cater to the concerns and issues of officers of color. Um, it's, uh, our, our initial foundings was with the National Black Police Association. Okay. Uh, we broke away in, in 1999, uh, let's call it a difference of opinions as sure. to 
what we needed to be doing and how we needed to be doing it. Mm -hmm. uh, so that has been our focus uh, the entire time of our existence. Can, can, you, can you elaborate on what the differences might be between the two associations? Navlio is more uh, centered towards uh, rebuilding the the bonds and relationships between community, community. and law enforcement. Okay. Um, we still do a lot of advocating for for, uh, for officers of color. Okay. Uh, obviously, that's been our our, our main focus. Uh, we have issues right now in the Boston area, in Philadelphia, mm -hmm. uh, in Connecticut, yeah. uh, and New York. Okay. Uh, I'm working with uh, executive committee members in Chicago. Um, so we, we do still uh, have a lot of advocacy in that respect. Mm -hmm. uh, but we're finding now with our various training programs, uh, perhaps 30, 35% of everybody who attends our conferences don't look like me. Okay. Okay. We've been getting a lot of success with working with various uh, police chiefs uh, here in Rhode Island. Uh, we're, we're working very strongly with uh, Colonel Asampico with the state police. Yes. Um, uh, Colonel Winquist in uh, Cranston. Mm -hmm. um, so it, co it covers the gambit. Yeah. And you, you said you also, some of your members are uh, uh, correctional officers. Yes. Um, how about officers now on campuses where, where you used to be? Uh, we run the gamut. Okay. Um, my my conference chair, in fact, is a retired uh, sergeant from Rutgers. Okay. The chief of police at Yale is is a uh, party that we're getting ready to uh, present a, a, an award to next month. Okay. The chief at uh, Brown is a strong supporter. Okay. You know. Um, so, so it's, it's everything that pretty much one can think about in terms of a uniform. If, if it's law enforcement related uh, or criminal justice system related, okay. we deal with it. Does that include ICE? That includes ICE. If they want to join, we're more than happy to have them coming along. Very good. Okay. I was just kind of curious to make sure that uh, I had a sense and, and that the viewers have a sense of, of uh, the, the breadth of well, the see, organization. We, we, we look at it from the standpoint that people in general, and especially people in, in communities of color, uh, have to find a way to, to constructively work with those people working in the criminal justice system. Exactly. Um, so it's, it, it's incumbent on us to try to encompass all uh, facets mm -hmm. uh, of that system. Okay, very good. So listen, let's talk a little bit about uh, uh, the conversation that uh, you and I have had and, and what uh, you sent me a letter. The yeah. association has taken a position on on the uh, the Kaepernick situation and the taking kneel and and how in some cases law enforcement uh, uh, officials from different states just the other day were on TV with the president uh, saying how uh, they didn't necessarily agree with uh, with that action. So what's what's Nabloy's uh, position on that? Our position on that has uh, is and continues to be that uh, first. Nike had every right whatsoever to uh, pull Colin Kaepernick in as a part of their new ad campaign. Right. Uh, in fact, <laughs> Nike's uh, stock is up. <laughs> yeah, I heard will. that this morning. Um, secondly, where the, the issue is of uh, taking a knee is mm -hmm. concerned, mm -hmm. it's constitutionally protected. Correct. Okay. Uh, it's never been an issue of disrespect or insulting the flag. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, in fact, uh, 
most people uh, aren't aware of it, but the Supreme Court has already ruled in, in a landmark uh, case that it's okay to burn the flag. I remember when that ruling came out in the 60s. Yes. Yeah, after the yes. 64 so, riots. You know, Taking a knee would, in most respects, be a, a less egregious uh, sure, offense. Sure, sure. But it still is constitutionally protected. Right. Uh, and the, the focus of his protest was not against the flag no. or the military or the national that's, anthem. That's correct. It was in protest against the, the numerous unarmed black lives that were being taken mm -hmm. by law enforcement uh, and still, in fact, being taken by That's law true. enforcement. Yep. Uh, I, I think everybody is, is now uh, familiar with the most recent incident in Dallas, Texas. Right. Uh, research uh, would seem to indicate that uh, unarmed people of color mm -hmm are being killed at the rate of two and a half times their white counterparts by law enforcement. Mm -hmm. uh, that's what the protest was about. Is it? And still and is, is, and about. is about, exactly. Okay. So as, as a organization of people of color, Nablio is firmly in, in, in concert with that protest. You know, it's, it's interesting how uh, uh, the protest was going, and then the president, of course, uh, weighed in on it last year yeah. and, and, and made it uh, uh, about, well, he tried to make it about something else beyond what it was. He yeah. tried to make it about the flag in disrespect to the flag, which, as we know, uh, it, it really had nothing to do with that. It, as we said, it really has to do about pointing out racial injustice yes. in, in the country. Uh, and of course now uh, the NFL had taken a position initially. They've, they've walked that back for a minute yep. and we're still waiting to find out what their final decision is going to be on whether or not it is or it is not something they were going to allow. Uh, but I guess one of the questions I would have for, for you and for your membership, especially those who are still active, uh, has there been any, uh, any blowback at the local level for officers that you're aware of that have been reported to your organization? I would have to say at this stage uh, there has been nothing reported to me yet in okay. regards to our most recent uh, uh, press statement. Oh good. Uh, what we consistently tell everyone to include uh, and particularly our counterparts mm -hmm. The the institution of policing mm -hmm. is inherently biased against people of color and low income, and unfortunately, it was designed to be that way. Explain that. When you look at the the principal foundations of policing, it was formatted to. Um, control mm -hmm. people of low income and then once uh, uh, slaves were brought into the picture, people of color. It was designed to be that way. Mm -hmm. Having said that, we also in, uh, advise people that the profession of law enforcement mm -hmm. has improved itself dramatically over the last 50, 60 years. When I first went on the job in 1971, um, you got sworn in, you, got, uh, you were given a badge, a gun, a uniform, you went to the police academy for two weeks to learn how to use the badge and gun mm -hmm. and how to write a ticket. Then you went on the street for up to a year, no further training. That was local academy, correct? That was, that, that was a local academy. Okay. Okay. Today, mm -hmm. if you get through all the background checks and uh, get hired, 
you're in the academy for at least four to five months. What's where you difference? can be fired at any point in time. What's the big difference? Okay. Then you get uh, the, the official badge, get sworn in, uh, and, and you can still be fired for any reason, no reason, for up to six months. Major change in, in 50 years. Mm -hmm. you know. uh, so if, if you want to change the way that law enforcement and people in the community interact with each other, mm -hmm. forget about changing the system because that's not going to work for you. Change the way the profession is managed. Change how we hire, who we hire. Change how you train, what mm -hmm. you train. Sure. Change the way people are supervised. Change the way you create policy and procedure. Mm -hmm. That will have a significant impact on how p law enforcement interacts with people in the community. Uh, I'm curious whether or not the, um, from, your from your perspective, are police unions across the country kind of in sync with the position that, that Nablio has taken with the Kaepernick issue? Most of the police unions take the same attitude that uh, the, the current administration in Washington takes. Okay. Um, and I say that tongue in cheek mm -hmm. because most of the unions are, are populated by my counterparts, not by black officers. Okay. Uh, there are three principal organizations in the, in the country that represent the, the issues and concerns of officers of color. Gotcha. That's Nablio, the MBPA, and Noble. Okay. And could, what, what do those acronyms stand for? Uh, That's two. Nablio is the National Association of Black Law Enforcement Officers, for which I am the chair. Right. The MBPA is the National Black Police Association. Okay. Noble is the National Organization of Black Law Enforcement Executives, uh, principally chiefs, deputy chiefs, so forth and so on. Unfortunately, we wouldn't have anybody remember it from Rhode Island, would we? Uh, there's one member of Noble in Rhode Island. That's uh, Chief Porter at uh, Brown. Okay. Um, I'm a former member of Noble okay. uh, as a former police chief. Mm -hmm. uh, Nablio itself has several members uh, of Noble. Okay. Um, so, so there are some, because yeah. I know that one of the issues here in, in Rhode Island, and more specifically in Providence, is that there's, there's uh, very few people of color in, that are beyond the rank of sergeant. Um, That's correct. In, in the police department. Uh, but, but I think there's, there's, a there's very few people of color uh, in, in Rhode Island who are, are ranked above the rank of sergeant. Yes. Um, principally, uh, principally, they're all uh, with state police. Uh, and I was going to say, uh, uh, one might understand it in uh, in, in uh, Bristol or uh, Situate or uh, maybe even uh, Wakefield. Yeah. But but when you start talking about the metropolitan areas in Rhode Island, such as Providence, Central Falls, Pawtucket, yeah. uh, Cranston, Warwick, that that in, that, that core middle. Uh, it seems to me that uh, police chiefs, while some, in my opinion, have been trying to improve their recruitment and therefore their 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 elevation process, yeah. um, uh, it's it's not happening enough and not fast enough. Uh, unfortunately, no. When I first got to Rhode Island in in '92, um, I came here from the Cleveland, Ohio area. Uh, in in that area. Uh, out of 80 some odd uh, law enforcement aid agencies in the, in the Cuyahoga County area, which made up Cleveland, mm -hmm. uh, I would tell you that a good 25% of the chiefs, deputy chiefs, so forth and so on, were people of color. Okay. Come to Rhode Island, there were perhaps uh, just shy of 400 uh, law enforcement officers of color in the entire state. 
uh, as a lieutenant with one of the state campus agencies, I was one of the eight or nine highest ranking uh, black officers in the state. Uh, so it, it's, it's been difficult. Mm -hmm. um, as I said, we've been working with a number of the chiefs to work with their um, recruiting programs. Um, we, uh, our local organization is, is in the process of starting a mentoring program okay. uh, to, to uh, bring in young men and women of color into the profession. Mm -hmm. um, I've already told them if that if that program works well here, it's going to be migrated to the rest of the national body. Okay. Uh, so you'll you'll see that then in New York, in Connecticut, in mm -hmm. Philadelphia, mm -hmm. uh, throughout New Jersey. Um, we have uh, we're, we're making good inroads, and I have to say it that way. Okay. Uh, as you mentioned, it's slow. Mm -hmm. I, I've spoken to Commissioner Perry um, several times about this issue, even when he was with the state police, mm -hmm. um, and 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 I, and I know that he's been, he's tried. It's it's in his heart to get it done. Um, one of the things, though, I think that we can't lay on the police department and there were recruitment issues, is um, the interest at the uh, at the local level on the part of uh, minority youth. Yes. Um, I remember when I was a kid growing up, um, you thought about becoming a policeman, a fireman, a lawyer, a doctor, or an Indian chief. But I don't see that same that same thought process today. I think in, in a young lot people. of that problem is embedded in the view people have of law enforcement, and that principally coming from the. Uh, uh, the very same issues that Colin Kaepernick is protesting. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, when people look at those issues and they see no accountability mm -hmm. for what they view as an injustice, uh, police injustice, sure. police misconduct, mm -hmm. um, clear uses of excessive force. Mm -hmm. It turns them off. Okay, what we tell young men and women today is that we're looking for people who remember who they are, remember where they came from, and remember why they're doing what they're doing when they put on that uniform and badge. Mm -hmm. We don't take the job for the excitement. Mm -hmm. We don't take the job to, uh, you know, for the purposes of trying to uh, get ahead with, with the uh, overtime and, and, and promotions. Mm -hmm. You know, I have a hard time explaining to young men and women of color, take the promotional exams. Mm -hmm. Because with rank and authority, you're able to, to monitor and and manage the activities of others mm -hmm. okay but until until people understand that the only way we are able to make significant change mm -hmm. in the way that system works is to become a part of the system exactly it's not going to change yeah you know, I, I agree, uh, and that it, and that extends to any profession, quite frankly. Yes, you've got to get involved in it to know wh wh where where changes could be made and to be and to be uh, an, an advocate for that change. Um, I guess one of the other things uh, that in, in closing, because we're running close to time, Charlie, but uh, uh, I, I think programs like PAL. Um, police athletic leagues yep. and, and things that were similar to that years past was a good way to get youngsters closer to a police officer, talk to them, find out that you know they're not really the, the enemy and, and maybe that makes a bridge into the system. Would you agree? Does that Nablio uh, advocate for that? 
we, we've been doing programs like uh, our, our What to Do When Stopped. Uh, we have, have one of our members in the Bridgeport, Connecticut area every year runs a basketball cl clinic for mm -hmm. kids. Mm -hmm. uh, in fact, it, it's in process right now. Um, we do, in New Jersey, uh, a youth symposium every year where we go into the schools mm -hmm. and, and actually sit down and talk to kids. Is that, is that something that could be done here in Rhode Island? We've done the youth symposium here at least once, uh, in, in fact, in 2009. Uh, it seemed to go very well. The, the problem that we had was that we had to bring the kids in to a location rather than go to the schools. Okay. The schools did not want to let us take over <laughs> for the day. Uh, which I understood, uh, but it, it, it's programs like that that help to strengthen the bonds and relationships, okay? Mm -hmm. People have to look at, at police officers as being part of the community. Likewise, law enforcement has to look at people in the community and say, these folks are no different than I am. They're my neighbors. That's it. Yeah. They're, they're your neighbors. They're the people across the street. They're the folks that go to, that, that shop in the same stores you do. Sure. Uh, go to the same restaurants you, you go to. Mm -hmm. The whole nine yards. And, and, and they have to be, understand from the very beginning day that they put on that badge and uniform. You treat people with respect and dignity. It doesn't matter what they did, who they are, what they look like. Everyone deserves to be treated with respect. Mm -hmm. Plain and simple. Well, I, and I hear you, and I think that's uh, obviously a great model. It should be uh, the, the model of every law enforcement organization, whether it be police or it's something somewhere else in the criminal justice system. That's it. But uh, listen, I, 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 I applaud you for the work that you and your organization are doing. Uh, it's a service that's necessary. It's an, it's an organization that's needed. And hopefully it, it'll grow and, and the communities will be more re receptive. But I, I, I got to tell you, maybe we'll have you back on another year to find out where you guys are with this situation. Yeah. But we have run out of time, but I want to thank today's guest, Charles P. Wilson, and you, the viewers, for tuning in to another segment of In Another Opinion. A special thanks to PBS for making this program possible. I'm your host, Peter Wells. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter at IA Opinion. And have a great day. Foundation, partnering with passionate Rhode Islanders to lead, transform, and inspire our state. Learn more at RhodeIslandFoundation.org.